Hi and welcome back. Envelope generators are classic and crucial building blocks in modular synthesis. But what exactly can they do? Why should you care? And what to look for when you want to buy one? Envelope generators are rather unique. That's because a lot of signals within a modular system, like the sine wave of an oscillator, square output of a clock generator, or sine wave from this very lovely visual LFO, are cyclic. Those signals are often visualized with a single cycle of those waveforms, like you see here. But in reality, the cycle is repeated again and again as long as the module is powered. Envelopes, however, are different. They can generate voltages with unique shapes. For example, this simple asymmetrical voltage that goes up and down, or this more complex shape with multiple stages. Before the shape is generated, the output of an envelope is zero volt. And after the shape is completed, the output goes back to zero volt. So they can generate a momentary signal. On top of that, they only generate a signal when you tell them to. For example, when I press this button. All that makes envelopes great when you want to change something like the volume of a sound only when you press a key. Modulate the character of a sound only every few steps of a sequence. Or create complex ambient, drone or self-playing patches. However, there are a lot of envelope generators and all with subtle different features. And some features are better suited for certain things than others. They can have different amounts of stages and ways to respond to triggers or gates. Some can generate triggers or gates themselves and be chained in series. Some can be looped to create continuous unique movement. And just like anything else in modular, envelopes get even more exciting when they can be modulated with control voltages. Understanding all the possibilities and differences in behavior will help you decide what envelope is best for you and how to get the most out of it. For this video, I teamed up with the friendly people of Erica Sins. They supplied me with these three rather different envelope generator modules here. They support the educational side of my videos, so this is not a review. This video is designed to help you understand envelopes and what is best for your needs. But their support allows me to talk about a wide range of possibilities within an easy to understand system, which is great. In this video, I go over the primary concepts and in the near future, I dive into more advanced ideas. So feel free to subscribe and stay tuned for that. If you'd like to support my videos or you wanna get access to PDF sheets with hundreds of patch ideas I used in my videos, have a look at my Patreon. You can also support my channel through affiliate links in the video description. But now, let's dive right in. Envelope generators need to be told when to generate a signal. In order to do so, you need to send them a high positive voltage. A very short high positive voltage is called a trigger. A slightly or a lot longer high positive voltage is called a gate. So triggers and gates are essentially the same thing. A momentary high positive voltage. A gate is effectively a long trigger and a trigger a very short gate. A common way to create a gate is by using a CV keyboard with gate output. As long as you press a key, the gate output will generate a high positive voltage. A common way to generate triggers is with a trigger sequencer. 
creating a short high voltage on each activated step. A lot of melodic sequencers can create gates with variable length, effectively able to generate triggers up to gates as long as each single step. Some envelopes just have a single trigger or gate input, like this module. Others, like this one, have separate trigger and gate inputs. Because gates and triggers are essentially just a high voltage with different lengths, in most cases you can experiment with both signals to either input. Unfortunately, different manufacturers might use different names, and how an envelope responds to a short or long high voltage input can vary. So always make sure to check the manual. In short, there are two major ways of operation, and they really determine how the envelope can be used. I explain more what this means musically in the next chapter on stages. But technically, most gate inputs are set to respond when a threshold at the input is surpassed, often around 1 volt. Anything above that threshold activates the envelope, and anything below it doesn't. This means that any module that can generate a high positive voltage can activate an envelope. And within a modular system, that means you often have a lot of fun options, beside a keyboard or sequencer. Triggers and gates from keyboards or sequencers are unipolar positive voltages designed to pass the threshold. But for example, a bipolar square wave LFO will activate an envelope as well. And so will a sine wave LFO every time it passes the threshold. Similarly, another envelope can activate an envelope, and a random voltage or something like the output of a joystick will activate an envelope as well any time they pass the threshold. Trigger inputs, however, are often set to detect a quick rising positive voltage. So you can use both a trigger and a gate to trigger something. Other signals can work as well. A square wave LFO or a sample and hold signal, for example, will work as a trigger when making jumps from a low to a high positive voltage. But a change from a positive to a slightly higher positive voltage might not trigger. Similarly, a slow rising signal from an envelope, LFO or organic voltage probably won't trigger, but a sudden change will. So again, it's worth it to experiment and see what works. Envelopes are great for evolving drones, ambient and generative music as well. You can have a look at these videos later if you are interested in that. They're a bit older but still good and beginner friendly. There are a lot of different envelope generators. Some are very simple, others very complex. The first thing to look for though are the stages an envelope generator offers. Let's start simple. The envelope signal you see here goes from 0 volt to its maximum output. For many envelopes that's around 10 volt. And then it drops back to 0 volt. You can divide this shape into two distinct different stages. The stage where the signal goes up is called the attack stage. And the one where the signal goes down is called the decay stage. Envelopes are called after the stages they offer. This example is called an attack decay envelope, often shortened to the first letters of each stage, so an AD envelope. This is a module that can generate two attack decay envelopes, and each envelope has a control for the attack and decay stage. With both controls at the minimum, the envelope generates a very short spike. The attack control sets how long it takes for the envelope to go from 0 volt to its maximum output. Turning the knob clockwise increases the time. This creates a ramp or rising shape. The decay control sets how long it takes for the envelope to drop from its maximum output back to 0. With both controls at the same spot, this creates a triangle-like shape. Reducing the attack time creates a saw-like or falling signal. 
Simple attack decay envelopes are great for short, plucky or rising sounds. For example, in combination with a sequencer. Attack decay envelopes often respond to high input voltages in the same way. Here you see the signal used at the gate input and the resulting envelope. As you can see, even a trigger or short gate causes the envelope to start and complete the entire attack stage followed by the entire decay stage. The fact the envelope finishes its stages is great for a lot of applications. For example, when you want to be able to add a rising motion to a sound, even when you are using short triggers. Or for example here, where a single trigger of this second sequencer is used to fire off the envelope. The trigger only occurs on one step, but the envelope creates movement to the filter over the course of several steps. However, if you feed this type of envelope a longer gate, the envelope shape stays exactly the same. And with an even longer gate, the result is again the same. So there is no dynamic variation based on input trigger or gate length. Some attack decay envelopes have a secret third stage, called a hold or sustain stage. This adds a lot of value to a simple envelope and this module does exactly that. Here you see an attack hold decay envelope. The hold stage of this envelope type doesn't have a control. The envelope just holds or sustains its maximum output level for as long as the input is high. That means envelope shape visualizations with a horizontal section like this are simplified and slightly misleading. Here you see the matching input gate for this envelope shape. But without changing settings, if you feed the module a very short gate, or in other words a trigger, there won't be a sustained part to the envelope. So it could look like this. And with a long gate, the envelope looks like this. So this envelope has more flexibility. It can do everything a simple AD envelope can do as long as you feed it triggers, like you saw before. But it can also hold a signal when used with a long gate. Note though that different input signals don't change the behavior, even though the output of this keyboard is called a gate, when the keyboard is pressed just briefly, it still triggers the entire attack decay envelope. So this isn't optimal for very dynamic quick keyboard action. A more complex and very common envelope is this one, which has an attack, decay, sustain and release stage therefore called an ADSR envelope. This module can generate an ADSR envelope with controls for each of the four stages. Again, with all controls at the minimum, the envelope generates a very short spike. Using just the attack and decay time controls, you can create the same shapes as with a simple AD envelope. The surprise here is the sustain control. Unlike the other controls, this doesn't set a time but instead the voltage level the decay stage drops down to. Finally, there is the release control. This again sets the time it takes for the voltage to drop from the sustain level back to zero volt. So this envelope with four stages can create a surprisingly large amount of variations. From simple attack decay envelope shapes to all sorts of attack sustain release variations and of course, creative shapes using four stages. However, ADSR envelopes like these from Erica Sins often respond different to trigger and gate inputs than you've seen from the attack decay envelope. Again though, always check the manual of different manufacturers for which inputs are available and how they behave exactly. 
Here you see a gate input and the matching ADSR envelope. Here is a longer gate input and the resulting ADSR envelope. Similar to what you saw before, the sustain stage is held as long as a gate input is high. When the gate ends, the release stage sets in. With a long gate, but only an attack decay time set, you can create simple attack decay envelope shapes. However, most ADSR envelopes don't complete the full attack stage when they receive a trigger or gate shorter than the attack stage. Instead, when an input signal stops to be high, they immediately start to drop back to zero volt. This means that if you use a short gate, as you see here, the resulting envelope is just a low voltage output. And when you use a trigger, the resulting envelope is basically useless. In some cases, this is exactly what you want. For example, with a gate from a keyboard. A long press creates a full ADSR envelope and holds a note. But short presses create subtle envelopes related to how quick a key is tapped. This behavior can also be great for organic modulation, for example when triggered by a semi-random voltage. But of course, this type of operation is pretty useless when you only have a trigger signal available. So deciding which behavior you want is important. Although when your setup grows, you probably want to have access to both for different situations. It's also worth it to look for clever solutions. For example, this ADSR has an optional built-in gate generator with adjustable length. So when you send this module a trigger, it can effectively convert that into a longer gate and still produce envelopes with a longer attack stage than the trigger you send it. It has a CV input for that as well, and it's also a lot of fun when looping the envelope, but more on that in the next video. For now, let's finish looking at the stages. A less common stage is a delay stage. This is added in front of the envelope and sets the time the positive signal generated by the envelope is delayed after it receives a trigger or gate. This module has a delay stage, controlled with this little knob here. A delay stage is great for deep sound design. For example, when you want to change the character of a sound a bit after you press the key. Or create shifted motion when you use a single gate to fire two envelopes. So to wrap up, an envelope that contains all stages we talked about in this video would be a delay, attack, hold, decay, sustain, release envelope. Some digital synths or modules have even crazier combos, but this is enough for now. An important thing though is to check what the time range for each of the stages of the envelope is. For quick plucky synth lines, envelopes with fast and short times are fine. But when you are interested in slow evolving sounds when playing a voice, or in ambient drone or generative patches, you want envelopes with stages that take a long time to complete. If you want ideas for envelopes, you can have a look at any of my videos because I use them all the time. But here are a few beginner friendly core patch ideas. Here you see a basic oscillator filter VCA synth voice. When you use a keyboard or sequencer to tune the oscillator, the trigger or gate output can be used to fire an envelope. You can use the envelope to modulate the VCA if you want to control the volume of the sound. But you can make a copy of the signal to modulate the filter as well. This way both the volume and the brightness of the sound are modulated. Instead of a single envelope, you can use two envelopes, one to modulate the filter and one to modulate the VCA. 
This is a common way to modulate the volume and brightness of the sound in a slightly different way, which can lead to nice results. Remember to send a copy of the trigger or gate signal to both envelopes. Modulating the filter and VCA is common practice. Here a keyboard and ADSR envelope are used. But you can use envelopes to modulate any parameter you like. For example, you can trigger an attack decay envelope to modulate the wave shape of a wavetable oscillator. Or you can use an envelope with delay stage to modulate the frequency of an LFO. In this setup, the LFO is modulating the filter as well to add some continuous movement to the sound. Here's the same setup with keyboard and single ADSR modulating the filter and VCA. This time though a copy of the gate is used on a DADSR and that envelope is opening a VCA. Not to control the volume of a sound but the amount of modulation. In this case an audio rate LFO modulating the frequency of the oscillator. This creates delayed frequency modulation when a key is held for a longer time. Again, keep an eye out for the next video. In the meantime, you can browse through these videos and as always, smash that like, subscribe and bell button if you want to see more Martelic content from me. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching and see you next time.